Attendees, am I looking here? Am I looking there? I'm looking here. Hey, what's up, attendees? Uh, we should have figured that out beforehand. But you know, it's indie film. What do we know? We don't know anything. We just go by the fly by the seat of our pants. Uh, welcome to our first kind of back in the world live event um, and our first time trying to teach a class via the worldwide internet. So thanks for going with us on this ride and for being patient on the journey as we figure all this out. Uh, if you are here, we want to know where you're from, what do you do in the biz, and most importantly today, which gimbal are you following along with and trying to learn? Because we are going to try to help everybody and get through all of this all in an hour. Uh, what else? Black Magic Collective. If you don't know what we are, we are a collective of film and TV artists and crew. We have events, classes, career advancement initiatives, and more. Membership is free. So join, join, join. You get your newsletter every single month to tell you what events are going on. Never miss another thing. And uh, I'm Jen Page. I am the executive director of Black Magic Collective, and I am also a director like you. And I have stuff here that I have no idea how to use. And I literally bought a gimbal two months ago, and I sent it back because I couldn't figure it out. I was so frustrated. And that's why we're here having a class. And I'm going to be just like you, unboxing from the beginning. I have the Ronin um, SC2 or something like that. See, I don't even know what they're called. I just know I need one to make things look pretty. And um, Really quick, before we get started, BMC Film Festival, we're currently accepting submissions. We um, are free to submit. We are, if you were in the top 10 finalists, you get to screen in LA at our festival that will be live this year in November. And you will, um, oh, I don't know, get um, uh, prizes and money and stuff if you win. Also, I feel like I'm yelling. Um, I, I, the camera's so far back and I don't, can't hear myself like normal. So sound guys, tell me if I'm being too loud. Um, audience, tell me if I'm being too loud. Just like, tone it down, Jen. Yeah. What else do you need to know? We need to thank our sponsors. One, Sigma for letting us use their beautiful space today to do this sample. And Black Magic Design, who always is there for us and keeping us, um, keeping the lights on basically. Okay, as we go along, put your questions in the Q&A box. We want you to put your gimbals together as we go. And if you're watching it live, the best part is that you can ask questions right here, right now, of our teacher, Patrick. It's Patrick Tapu. Yes. He said it to me earlier, and I already forgot, because pandemic brain. Um, Patrick is going to be helping all of us, including myself and our students who have volunteered. Randy and, I'm sorry, tell me again. It's Kay's Alatrashi. Kay's Alatrashi. Kay's Kay fine. I K's. I, cool you know what? I, I think I knew how to do names before the pandemic, and now I don't even know what a fork is anymore. Relearning. Um, relearning it all. Okay, so tell us what to do. I literally haven't even opened it because I thought anybody who gets this is going to be as confused as I am. Yeah. And they don't know where any of these, all these parts are. It took me forever just to figure out that this opened two ways. <laughs> um, Honestly, though, I feel like that apprehension is totally normal yeah even me I've been you know I'm a director DP I've been doing it for 12 years when you get something new you're a little bit apprehensive to dive into it because you don't want to fail right we want to be good at everything we do but honestly I think the easiest approach is just to let's see what's in the box and let's take out the most important pieces and, and start learning okay this looks important yeah so this is definitely the main piece of the gimbal so everybody you guys could take out your all your main pieces so okay. we'll take out the, the the actual gimbal itself We'll take out the battery there's and the, handle. There's a ton of wires. Should I just put them to the side for now? Yeah, so a lot of these wires you, you're not going to need right off the bat. Some of them are for con connecting things like the, the Raven Eye, depending on which, which I have. DJI drone or other drones you have, or gimbal, excuse me. And some of them are counterweights, some of them are screws. So I wouldn't, let's, let's start with the basic first. Okay. I think once you get the basics, then it's pretty easy to dive further into it. So everybody has their main gimbal portion we're going to have the handle which is also the battery got it and hopefully everybody which has i charged stupidly up. just realized i probably didn't charge up so let's hope i get through this yeah that's all right <laughs> we'll still be able to get it then we have the stand which is going to attach to the bottom of the handle now depending on which gimbal you have you may or may not have this but most of them i think have a, a stand right now and then we're going to take out our base plates so the the main plate that goes with your gimbal and then the plate that goes underneath your camera to attach. Okay. Um, and just so everybody knows, I, um, Randy and I are both using an extra piece, the small rig stuff. There's like a riser and a, what are they called, John? <laughs> John Parento, everybody. Yay! I'm standing between you because I don't have a mic. And so you both do. So um, real quickly, on the, the Pocket 6K or the Pocket cameras from Blackmagic, they're a little wide, 
right? Yeah. Though Patrick has a way to make it work without this. But I found that small rig had this little plate that you could pick up, and with it comes there it is, right? this top little piece here, which allows you to slide the camera left and right, which is helpful when you have too wide of a camera. So that's what that is. So it comes as one unit, this piece and this piece, not this long piece, just the short one on top, and uh, allows you to use a wide camera. And if you guys need the link to that, just put that in the comments, and we'll make sure we get the link to that yeah, we'll for you later. Right, OK. <laughs> He's going to do that a lot. I wish he had like a thing where he just could appear. So that is a great piece. And I think depending on what camera system you have, you kind of have to experiment, maybe do some research before you buy the gimbal to make sure you have all the pieces you need. But either way, if you purchase a gimbal and you have a certain camera set up and then you end up realizing it's hard to, to balance, there's pieces like that, aftermarket pieces, third party um, accessories that are useful to be able to help with balancing. For example, on mine, I have a counterweight. This counterweight here, is a huge piece for me to be able to balance the it's pockets. It's so much tinier from. and easier than what I have. Well, Thanks a lot, John Franco. <laughs> they all work, though. They all work to solve the same kind of problem, so you just have to play around with it. I would say let's start with assembling the base, which you already did. So you're going to grab your handle. You're going to grab your stand, and let's secure that. It's just so nifty. Isn't it great? Are we, so everybody here has the DGI. We all have. You have the, the Ronin-S, which is great. And then we're working with the RS2. Cool. This is not brought to you by DJI, but they should get involved. Right? Ding! <laughs> so we have this set up. Now we're going to take our main gimbal here. And if you see at the bottom here, most gimbals will have very similar setups. You have the connector here. So this, this little piece, this handle connects right into the bottom of the gimbal. You want to make sure that your lock is off, because if your lock is set to lock, then you won't be able to, to click that into place. Copy that. So once you have it clicked into place, then you could lock it. Oh, look You're re-watching this a video later. Different brand gimbal. <laughs> nice. Which one is that? This is a Zion Crane 2. Okay, so it comes, it's a little different. It has the same foot. So that screws in like that. But it doesn't have the locks that the Ronin has. I guess the newer ones maybe have that. Yeah. Um, but it's a little bit older model. But they all definitely work similar. Yeah. I think the big difference with this unit versus the RS2, because yes, the new model, it definitely has more sort of auto calibration tools. So yeah. anyway, I just wanted to get that in there. So we were representing That's awesome. everybody. Yes. We'll have some of that later. This was a coincidence. Um, okay, really quick. So my thing doesn't seem to like click into a lock. Should it? Click? It's locked. Oh, it is. That's okay. Clicked. So you see that little. Oh, it felt like it should have lock. went. I felt like it should have went like one more, but it won't. So okay. No, nope. you're good. Can I ask one? Absolutely. So this is one of the first things that kind of got me a little bit. Is this lever supposed to be all the way, or because this is as far as it goes? Yeah. You know, usually, if that's as far as it, it. No, that's if that's as far as it goes when you're locking. Yeah. I, definitely don't try to push it further, or else you'll probably. Well, at the same time, I want to make sure this thing doesn't. Absolutely. Fly. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it really depends on the on the gimbal you're using. For example, w once we go through it, you'll notice that you could adjust the locks on here and actually make them tighter, which helps you with, with uh, stabilizing it. So definitely make sure you're locked in. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our base plate, the one that goes underneath the camera, and we're going to secure it to our camera. And my instance here, I have half a cage on my Pocket 6K Pro. And I like to leave it on so I could switch from gimbal to handheld to um, tripod if I want without actually having to take the entire cage out. So and, and I guess that kind of is what this does, right? It makes it so I can slide it on and off without yeah, taking so your, the gimbal Yeah, so yours apart. is already set. Okay. So you're going to want to attach your piece to the gimbal here, and then you're going to slide that piece on. Okay. So I'm attaching this whole big plate then. Yeah, you're going to slide Do, that Does in. it matter which way? Let's see, usually there's one way in and one way out. So that could be it right there. Let's double check with John since this is his setup and he may know a little bit better. Hey, John, when we're setting this plate here. Yep. Is there a way, a best way in and out? Here's, here's, since this is actually my rig here, I'm raising my voice so you can hear me. <laughs> I slide it in from the front. 
just make sure that's unlocked. And then once the gear drives, you're set to go. Okay, so what is my front? So what I usually do is either, maybe, either or. Maybe it's unlocked. Suggest. Um, since this is facing, so there's the screen, right? Mm -hmm. Let's get that locked on tight. So start by leaving this lock so it's there, then unlocking this here. And, oh, okay, you're a little long on that. So let me just. Wait. So get that to lock back there, and then similarly lock there. If you okay. put these things, I don't know whether you can see there, Shimon. You have these little locks, so it's not an auto thing. So when you unlock it, it's going to stay unlocked. So if you want to get to a position, click it back to lock, and then move it to that position. It'll lock so I'm going to go backwards. What you just did, just for stupid people sure. like myself. Um, see, I already know it. So you had that there, but there was another one. Was it? Well, it's here for that. So unlock it. So was it forward? Okay, there okay, we go. Yeah, yeah. So now, it was that way, and then. Now the problem with since you're using a pocket camera, um, your balance sometimes is too much that way. So this arm has been extended out. So you need to actually push it back if you're going to fold it. Okay, okay. copy but that. But then when you rig it, you're going to have to push it back again. Okay. So a lot of the newer gimbals have lock systems, like the D DJI RS2. They have these cool little lock systems, and it makes it a lot easier. I don't know if you guys could see, but it makes it a lot easier to be able to really work with it and balance it so everything's not kind of all over the place. Okay, now back to where we were. The right. people in the back, like myself, we're, we're going in this way. So she's a, a few steps ahead. Everyone else, make sure this plate, the, the plate that goes underneath your camera is tightened and set and ready to go. And depending on how many threads you have at the bottom, I suggest making sure it's really secure and tight so your camera's not moving all over the place. Is there an optimal starting position with the long plates? <laughs> as, far as, as far as this counterweight? Front or back, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Um, if you're using a pocket camera, you tend to want to be a little bit more back. Okay. Um, just because it's front heavy. And I get we'll move it a lot as we're balancing. Yeah. So maybe just lock that while you're in there. Yourself. Okay. Copy that. All right. We all have our plates attached. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to unlock, again, depending on which gimbal you have, with these gimbals, they're, they have a locked position. We're going to unlock them. So we can kind of I'll remind get everybody if you're just coming in, we want to know what gimbal you're using. Let us know in the comments. Let us know where you're from, what you do in the biz. Great. So then we all have that sort so of. Now we know where the, the back and front of the gimbal okay. is. And that's again to reminder, because this is one of those things that was confusing to me. We started with screen faces us, correct? Yes. Or does it matter? Because you don't have your screen facing you. So does it? Yeah, but I could rotate mine. So is that the best way though? So screen yeah, facing I think so. us. Everything else sure kind everything of that is, way. Yeah. Okay. Copy that. But again, that could be adjusted. But I think getting it set up as close to what, how you're going to use it as okay. possible is probably best. So the next thing we're going to do is now attach the longer plate that comes with your gimbal. We're going to slide it in, lock that in, and then we're going to take the camera with the base plate we have here, and we're going to slide it in. And it looks like I have mine. The wrong way, so I'm going to adjust mine. Now, John Parento, is there a way? Because this is one of the problems I had too, which was. So it is a little tricky. Okay. Because you have a little, little uh, catch there. So you kind of have, have to put it in that a way first. little notch, like yours and does. It. So I feel like and then kind of screw sure it in lock four. Here, so. All right, let me take that back it. out and feel that yes. again. Yes, as tight as okay. possible, for okay. sure. So then um, you don't have any. Where should I kind of position the camera roughly in relation to? You made it look so board. easy. Like, see, this is also how we do it. So you see that you're not crazy That's when you're home question. going, I can't figure I'm gonna, it out. I want to answer that so everyone Did can hear this. Did you push that in or you that. just pushed? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just get it kind of close, but not up against that. Perfect. And then, and then lock it. Got it. So here's a good question. He asked, where should, where should this be positioned as far as your base plate? And I think you have to kind of know your camera's weight and just kind of feel it out. This feels almost like the weight is centered between the lens and the body of the camera. So I would kind of place it maybe center. The thing is you're going to adjust this regardless, but you could always try to place it where you feel the most balance is at as far as the weight of your camera and lens. 
Um, but there's no real right place. And it's going to be one of those things where it's trial and error until you get to know your equipment. But you want to maybe place it kind of center where there's okay. the overall balance. If, if I'm using a particularly large, heavy lens, would I be going back? I think so. Okay. He, yeah. As, so he said, if I'm using a large, a particularly large heavy lens, would I lean it further back? For example, like a, the cinema lenses you guys have here. Yeah, I would, I would adjust based off the weight. You just have to kind of feel your camera and realize, even before you put it on, where, where is the weight? Is the weight center? Is it? Is it? I think it. Body that's heavy? one of the things I was heavy? confused with because I was like, do I, how do I do I use all these to balance? But you're saying start right off the bat with going using the plate as part of that balance. Yeah. Now there's no right or wrong way to do it, but I feel like the more you could get everything right in each step, the easier it is to balance, and then the end result will just be better. You know, Makes especially sense. when you're doing the check um, with the electronic aspect of it. Uh, it'll be able to balance it smoother. But I like to just, yeah, get to know where the weight is. And this one feels kind of almost center, probably heavier on the body by a little bit. E either way, you're going to adjust it. So it's all good. Don't feel intimidated by getting it 100% right. Producer Harley, let us know if anybody has chimed in with what they're using. And uh, why don't we bring Marlon up really quick and ask him how if, how is he keeping up? Does he have any questions? Marlon is at home. You say hello. To Hi. Me. Hey, everybody. Any, Marlon, how's um, things going for you? So far, I have my camera on, but the question I was going to ask, because I'm using an OG pocket cinema camera, would it be best for me to get like a counterweight to help keep it balanced, or do you have any suggestions for that? Can you read? Great. Um, you, you thank you, that? Marlon. We're, uh, John P is going to answer so that. He has an OG cinema camera. Marlon, is that a HD model, or you mean the 4K? Uh, it's the, the original, so you the big know. square one. Uh, <laughs> so he's asking about a counterweight when it comes to the original. You know, the original yes, the model that's about so big. Yeah, you know, yeah. So I think your counterweight conversation about how your counterweight and this might apply for that. Yeah, absolutely. So. I recommend everyone research their camera, look on the online forums, and just kind of learn about your camera when it comes to gimbals. And you'll see, you'll get a lot of your questions answered by other people who've either previously already purchased it or have ran into issues. Um, when it came to the Pocket 6K Pro, I read that a lot of people were struggling with balancing it because it, it is a little bit of a bigger camera, wider camera, the way it's built. So I purchased the counterweights just to have, and I purchased even the um, that additional plate that John was talking about that lets you kind of counterbalance it just to have also just in case. So, you know, maybe I'm going to have a job where it's a different gimbal and I'll need those, those tools to be able to balance. So in my case, I did use this counterweight here. Now, I didn't even, if you notice, I didn't even actually add a metallic piece. I'll show you how it looks real quick. Do, 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 do. So the counterweights come with these little. It's so nifty. It's weights. so tiny and much easier to deal with. And you screw them on here, depending on how much counterbalance you need, and then you could add them. Um, in this case, you could add them. I think on the outside of it. There we go. That's how it works. So I've never had to actually use the weight itself. I've only used the counterbalance, uh, what do you call this? Attachment. Attachment, yeah. But you do it on the outside, so there's an example. If you needed an extreme level of counterbalance, it comes with three, four different weight options. In my case, I really didn't need any of the weight, I just needed the weight of the attachment itself. Reminder to everybody who's just joining us, we want to know what gimbals you're using. And if you have your questions, put them in the comments box so we can answer them. Okay, now we have our cameras on. This is very exciting. I'm, I'm oh, being, we were so close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Carly, somebody brought up a quick mention, comment about lenses. And yes, the lens will make a big difference. There are definitely cinema lenses that are going to be much heavier and make it much more front weighted. If anything you add to the camera, if you want a matte box, a follow focus, 
when you're setting up, you have to set all that up. So that all counts into the weight. So yeah, definitely be aware of the size of lens you use. Some lenses may not actually work with your gear. So don't just assume you can take anybody's lens and plug it in. You got to always test that first. Well, you actually brought up a good point, John. You want to make sure that your lens cap is off, your battery is in, your memory card is in. Everything that, that needs to be attached or inside of your camera should be already on it. So then when you're balancing it, you're balancing it the way you're going to shoot it. So that could, you know, as far as if you want to attach a follow focus, if you want to attach any additional gear included on your camera. So when you're balancing it, you don't have to make adjustments. So thanks for that, John. That reminds me, I have a lot of things that need to go on here. That anybody who got this new one is going to have the same issues. So like this little Raven Eye thing, right? Yeah. Um, would I put this on before we balance? You would. It would be part of your balancing. And in this case, it goes right on the bottom here. And you have actual little plate to slide it under. Okay. I am hot and sweaty. I don't know what is going on with the heat today. All right. Oh, that just clicks right in. Yeah. Okay. Easy peasy. I'm assuming I did that the right way. I left the outlets on the outside. I'm assuming that. Oh, there's outlets on both sides. Yep. Oh, well. Now... Obviously, there's plugs, and you, you want to get all the plugs plugged in and everything set up before we even move forward with the balance. Which I think that was a lot of the issue I had when I first got this, was knowing there's so many cables. Like, and this may be something that John can help us with because he's had to do all this. Like, all of the cables. It's so confusing when you first get a gimbal and you're brand new yes. to know where all the cables go. So can you run us through that before we move into balancing more? What I actually might suggest, if I may. Yeah is that we balance them as they are now, okay. just to keep it simple, to understand yeah. the concept of balance. Then we lock it off and re, uh, apply rebalance all the okay. extra stuff. Absolutely. And then we can rebalance Love that. Time. Love well, it. I think that's also one of the reasons, you know, people, all of us get apprehensive about doing something is there's so much stuff. But so if we start with the basics, once you have the basics of just balancing it, then you add the rest and, and you're comfortable because you know that all right, I already know how to balance it. Now I just have to balance it with the additional components. Okay, great. Love it. So we're all set. Mm -hmm. All right. Now in your case, yours doesn't have locks, correct? Uh, no. All right. This is like new. So let me switch so people could see yours. Sure. So with the original Ronin S, there's no locks the way this new one has locks. So if you don't have locks, that's fine. You don't need locks. But we'll start with the first and easiest portion, which is the vertical tilt. So this is the vertical tilt. Okay. Now, what I like to do is I actually like to adjust the plate first and get it balanced. So we're going to adjust the plate and move it backwards until the camera is balanced and, it, and it's center and it's not, not moving back or forward. And we're going to come back to this, but I would definitely start with that. Oh, it's like very little, like moves it a lot. Yeah, sometimes it's super small micro adjustments. So just be patient. This is honestly, balancing is great to have some music on, <laughs> to be completely relaxed. So that looks like the camera's leaning forward still, right? Even though this looks like it's straight up and down. We want to go with where the camera feels. Yeah. Okay. So something like this. Yeah, exactly. So that looks as long as it's pretty, pretty centered, because we're, we're still going to come back and make adjustments. Okay. All right, so we, we all have it centered now. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to turn it up and see which way it moves. Now, mine's actually not moving in any direction, which means it's close to being balanced. Let me see where yours falls. All right, so hers is front heavy. That means a lot of the weight is on the front of her lens. So same you with yours. You guys like the bad kids in class. I know, I got the I know but you're, it's, it's, it's all going in here. It's showing them the same stuff that so we're we're so basically it almost looks like it's close yeah. to being balanced Hold on. between yeah. the mics sure i between that's two mine ferns. so that kind of is already balanced Got mostly it. i mean it's it's a little back heavy because it doesn't have the fall focus sure. and things like that on it so but that's pretty much cl close to where it is so i'm just helping them along absolutely so if if your ca camera is front heavy you're going to want to make the adjustments now we're going to take this arm here, which is the tilt axis arm, and we're gonna adjust. So in my case, I'm not gonna really make too big of an adjustment because it looks like, all right, so mine's a little bit back heavy. 
So let me show you real quick. So let's try it again, front heavy. So now we're going to adjust this and we're going to move it down. Actually, we might move it up. So we're going to move it the opposite way. So I've legit never been able to get a gimbal to do the thing where it goes straight. I've, it's just never. So I would play with that. I would loosen it up so you have room to, to adjust. And definitely, depending on your camera, protect it so the lens doesn't come back and slam against the gimbal and you don't want to get any scratches on your gear. But We're in close. theory, if you're falling backwards, you want to push this arm down, the yeah. face down. So if, if, if it's back heavy, this moves down. If it's front heavy, this moves up, which I was initially doing the opposite of. So once you have it where it could be completely straight and it's not moving and even at an angle, this is pretty close to, I mean, this is balanced to me. So now that you have that part, we could keep that locked. Let's see how yours is. I actually want to. Absolutely. Where you should work with. Okay, so, so the motors are going to do a lot of the calibration and balancing and taking up some of that slack. So you don't have to have it 100% perfect balance but it manually like this stage. Yeah, so you get it 99% there, as close as you can get it. And then the battery or the motors will take over when you calibrate and we'll show that in a second. The key is though, you don't want to strain those motors, you know, as little as possible. You want their work so to be stabilizing the camera and not working to keep it centered. So it's really important to get it as close as you can without, you know. I mean, I would say if you could get it completely balanced without the internal motors need, needing to correct anything, you're going to save not only battery, but you're going to, it's going to be easier on your motors because if if you go the lazier route, not saying that's what you're saying, but mm. if you really don't try to balance it and you're like, I'm just going to let the motors correct everything, I mean, you're going to cut the lifespan of your gimbal. And I don't know how much, but it, significantly. And so, it's just not going to work as smooth the day of the oh, shoot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you don't, don't freak out yeah. if you can't get it absolutely perfect at this stage because the motors are there to help you, but you don't want to rely on them really at all. Preferably yeah. you get it close. The idea is when you go through a calibration, particularly on the RS2, you can look at this little scale and it'll tell you which way, which motor is stressing more than the other. If you can get it straight up and down. Yeah, it's through. really intuitive. The newer gimbals are, are easier to work with, but let's go to this Ronin S, for example. This doesn't have locks. And he brought up a good point. He just holds the roll axis here. And then it's kind of like the same thing. So. But yours just looks barely back heavy. So it could be a, a oh, slight adjustment work. until, I mean, it's actually really close. Actually, no. it's, I would say that's we should stabilized. That okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, the key is to make sure this is locked in really tight. Some of these gimbals, you could actually adjust the lock to make it really, really tight. You could pull this out and then it creates a tighter lock. And sometimes I've noticed the tighter lock makes a huge difference between uh, being able to balance, you know, one of the axes. Um, John just showed me something I didn't even know existed. And it's this little, I'm showing this for you, Shimon. This little knob here, apparently. A little bit of twist, a little bit of twist. And it gave me a, just enough sort of forward and backward. Because I was messing with the plate. But I guess you just can mess with this little thing and get... Balancing. Now, you still want to make sure that right. this is where it balances. This is the key. So sometimes it'll balance straight even, but you want to make sure that it holds in this upright position. And that's where this tilt axis comes into play. It's so subtle. It's like such tiny moves. This is why I like to hire my DPs, let them deal with this. That's right. pretty good. Pretty good. So now it's still back heavy, so we'll we'll adjust it slightly. All right, so this is not locked. So let's start over. The other thing with my gimbal is that I have it set up for my camera, and I only have to change like one axis mm. whenever I set the camera back on it. Um, obviously, if I change a lens, I have to do a little bit more, but most of the axes lock off, and you may not have to change them much at all. You get used to it after that point. 
Just also, you, once you own an original setup, so yeah, and once you, I feel like, just really get comfortable with your gear. Honestly, thirty minutes, an hour initial setup, just playing with it, it'll be a breeze. The next time you you need to uh, balance it. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> Yeah. I Same thing with a math teacher who does, tells you all the math, and then you go home and you're like, I don't know what I just learned. The good thing is, though, there's so many tutorials on YouTube. And none of them were helpful. <laughs> That's why we're doing this right now. All right, so we're close. We're still so, slightly back. So I'm curious, because when I look at it, it looks pretty even. So what are you, like, what are you basing it off of, just so, so I know? With the, the vertical tilt axis, the way you know it's balanced is when the camera points up and doesn't move, okay. and even at an angle. So right now we're still a little back heavy. Okay. So even though this might balance initially, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that it's able to stay in different positions without doing that. So. Did you figure yours out already? Kind of, but I had a head start. It was already pre. Yeah, yours looks great. First try. Get out. <laughs> All right, so we're we're close. Now we're just a hair. So now the lens cap is on. Is that throwing? Yep. It's all right. That happens. Some of you probably have your lens caps on. That's okay. So now we're a little front heavy. So it's micro micro adjustment sometimes. So now we're a little <laughs> back heavy. That's all right. Got to be patient, especially with the initial setting up. Just be patient, have fun with it. I'd say when you get close enough, we'll move on because my camera is always gonna be the problem. That's why I don't like using these things. I mean, I love gimbals and shots. Like I am a music direct, like I love directing things musical, so I need movement, but I want someone else to do the movement, not me. Let's see. All I see is him going a little bit here and barely moving it, and it's going. Yeah, it could be also this plate. So we'll go back to this plate sometimes and, and balance it out to make sure that this portion is. We could take that off. All right, so we're still a little back heavy. Um, what do you shoot normally? What is what is the type of stuff you shoot? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess I should come over here because you have a microphone. So uh, music videos, narrative, short films, um, not as much documentary stuff. But, how uh, much do you, how often do you use good. your gimbal? I haven't used, like I bought it and then we went through the whole pandemic thing. So that's kind of shut everything down and I haven't really gotten enough like kind of use out of it yet. And that's why I'm here because I want to like kind of learn how to properly use it so I can actually kind of incorporate it. Ah, there you go. So yours is balanced. Yours is balanced. You could check the axis. He's like yours is balanced enough. No, it's good. I mean, that's essentially what you want, is you want it to be able to be in all of these positions and it not move too much. So I would say we're good. All right. Okay, I have a question for you. Absolutely. So my camera doesn't have the swivel screen, but yours does. Yes. Do you have to have it in position? Is that going to affect the balance or not really? Yes, everything affects the balance. So technically, technically, if you want to, if you know you're going to shoot in a position, if you do have a sw swivel screen like the Pocket 6K Pro, you want to balance it in that position. I want now, that camera, John Parento. I'll be honest, though. A lot of times when I'm on a shoot and I need to make quick adjustments and it's already balanced, I'll flip it out anyways and the motors will compensate. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not encouraging you guys to do that. But it's definitely best practice to always balance it in the exact form that you're going to shoot it in. Okay, great. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go with the roll axis, which is this lever here. So if you have a lock, if you're working with a RS2, you could unlock it. Just make sure you hold your camera so when you let go, it doesn't slam against the, the lens or camera. So now we're going to check which direction it's moving in. So mine's falling towards the left, so it's a little heavy on that side. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this arm out. I mean, mine's almost all the way out, and it's super left. Let's see how this goes. Come on. I'm breaking a sweat, y'all. Breaking a sweat. Yeah. Okay. So I would get it where it's as close to center balance as possible. 
Um, Holly, any questions coming in? Is Marlon doing okay with his setup? All right. I think it's balanced. Let's make sure yours, this is oh, locked. Oh, damn it. No, it's okay. <laughs> it just makes it a little easier. So once you could get in a, in, in a position where it doesn't move, you're close. So yours is real close. It's going to be literally a micro adjustment. Now, if you have the RS2, again, you could adjust these lock knobs to make it looser where these adjustments are easier to make. If it's really, really tightened, it's going to be hard to make the micro adjustments. So depending on which gimbal you have, you want to make sure that your lock is loosened so you could adjust these. So I'll show you how to do it. So all you do is lift it up. So now you've made it real loose, and then you'll do the reverse once you have it balanced. Um, can you put that on, on the close-up camera? What you just did was, are you going to show them on yours sure. while I feel it? Because I didn't even know you could do that either. So with this lock in particular, you could lift it up, and now it gets looser and looser every time you lift it up, and the reverse will tighten it. Right. So Exactly. So once you have it balanced, you want to make sure that it's really, really tight. It makes a huge difference. How are we looking? I don't know if I have the patience for this. <laughs> I don't know how you guys do it. It's like these the tiniest adjustment just totally screws the whole thing up. There is. It's always walking it, away having a snack and coming back. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you have to do is that. Is that now? Is this snack break time? Yeah, so okay, once you, so once you're tightening, you're also doing that sort of up and down, screw it back in. Yes. Yeah, like a wrench. Like exactly. A, like a wrench. And you want to get it as tight as possible because then once it's tight, then you check to make sure that it's not moving. So right now, mine might be moving because I don't have it really secured down, but it's real close. It is hot. My hands are all sweaty and they're very slippery. It is. We're not used to being under the bright lights. We're used we're to being in our, in our little holes in our room talking to you guys from our... My nice desk. Actually, my garage room. is always hot. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, okay. It's staying wherever I put it. Perfect. So now that that axis is balanced. Now I'm never changing anything. We're not adding anything. We're not changing lenses. We're not putting it. <laughs> this is it. How's yours looking? So there, there is a, for the next piece, I'm sure, Patrick will show you the official way, which I do as well, but yeah, a quick good. test on the last rotation is to undo that and tilt it mm -hmm. this way. It shouldn't rotate really anyway. This one clearly has, needs a little adjustment. But if you look at this one over here, talking into this way, yeah. mm -hmm. um, if I undo all my things, so if I tilt it, it yep. doesn't really go anywhere. Okay. That's how so you know it's stable. It's because I've already preset that, so it's stable. There is a way to do it in the software that helps you calibrate and test that officially, but this is sort of a manual. Check. So I'm pushing forward a little bit then, is yeah. what you're saying. Pushing forward. Um, so then all these arms have like markings on them and measurements and numbers. Is it useful to write that down as to what's balanced or what? That's a good question. You can. That, I've never done that, but there's no rule that you can't. You know, mark down maybe certain lenses, certain setups, right, yeah. just so it's easier. Yeah, I think that's useful. I want to cheat. What is his at? They're kind of the same setup. So we're close. I'm a little bit. Carly's putting up a comment. Carly, we up now? Keith is asking why we didn't attach all the cables. It was only because this is a beginner. I wanted to. I wanted to. <laughs> it's a beginner, beginner gimbal class. We wanted to go through the basic concept of balancing. Yes, we will have to redo it when we add all the other stuff onto it. But it gets so complicated. We want to make sure that you just saw how to balance the camera alone. So stick around because if you, ha I don't know how to put any of these cables together. So John is going to take us through every single cable after we get through the basic balancing. Yeah, once you, once you could balance the basic setup, nothing changes. You're just adding more things and then you'll have to balance it the same way. But once you have the balance down, you'll be good to go. 
Okay, I think I'm pretty good. Let's check in with Marlon. Our, uh, what do we call him? Our remote uh, anchor? <laughs> Our remote student? Yeah, it's... Oh, Marlon, how's things going? It, it's like the slightest thing since I'm using this small camera. It just throws it off. Uh, I thought I had it balanced for a moment, and now it seems to be leaning more to the right. So I'm just trying to adjust it uh, so I can be able to use it. And this part, I think, is the most frustrating thing for me when I got this gimbal during the pandemic because I tried to balance it, but you know, I would just have to walk away because it became so frustrating. Yes, you guys John's gonna come me? back and talk about that. So, so I know that he's having a little bit of frustration with getting it balanced. It seems like every little movement changes it. I'm with it's, you. It's it can be frustrating. There's a reason why steady cam steady cam operators set up the, the camera once and they leave it alone. You know, I use one camera and really a wide angle, certain wide angle lens on mine all the time because I've set it up and it's basically from that point forward, pretty easy to just, you know, set up again the next time I need to use it. Anytime you're doing something from scratch with a new camera, new lens, new whatever, it's gonna take some time to tweak. And you can even see Patrick who does this all the time is still tweaking his camera just a little bit to get it right. Um, so don't get frustrated. Repetition will make it easier. Now with my rig over there, I can actually set that thing up with that camera literally in like about two minutes. Um, and the balancing takes like 30 seconds because I already know how to balance it. So it's just repetition experience. You'll get there, Jen. That was all towards Jen and more. I, I, I mean, I think it's normal. It's frustrating not to be good at something, but once you get used to it, I'm telling you, just like John says, you'll. It, it's so easy, it's a breeze. And sometimes you'll be, yeah, you'll be tied up with little micro adjustments, but I'm a perfectionist and I want to get it as close to perfect as possible. But I wouldn't let that, uh, you know, make you apprehensive from learning. It's super simple. I hate learning new things too. Like I hate not being great. I will at say the payoff if you haven't used a gimbal is worth it because I had to shoot my daughter who's a producer right now as a music video and I had to shoot the whole thing just basically me and her. And this made it look so much more high level. Like it looks like we had a crew Absolutely. because it just moves so beautifully. Totally worth it. Totally yeah. worth the frustration, the initial frustration. All right, so we all have our our roll axis. We feel good about it. Good so enough. So we're gonna do the last one, which is the pan axis. Oh God, there's more So if axis. you have a lock, unlock it. If you don't have a lock, you are going to do this test here. And if you could see mine is pretty close, but it's still leaning towards the left. It's not terrible though. Okay, I'm, what am I doing again here? So you're just gonna lean it. Oh. Yours is actually close, try the other side. If it's not moving and staying in position, you have it. Yeah, yours is great. Woohoo! Yeah, so lost. All right, so. This was basically a test to see if we failed or not. <laughs> So for those of you watching, what he's saying is once you're balanced, if you lean your gimbal left or right, the camera should stay, the, you know, you should not move. I should be able to see down the, the picture. It looks like yours is slightly. So um, you want to be able to move yours and it won't move. So right now it's looking like it's kind of heavier on I could be cheating. Mine might here. all be locked. So I would try to adjust like it moving. slightly and just keep playing until you notice um, that it's For not those moving. of you who are watching, I would love to you to put in comments any gimbal things you've known from your own experience, uh, lessons you can share with everybody that we can throw up, um, questions that are still coming at you, questions that came up on set for you that maybe we can fix. Um, but what is next? So after this, we're going to go into the menu system of our gimbals and we're going to do a calibration but we oh want to make God. sure that we get this as close as possible. Well, now, now it's leaning again. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to go eat now. It's no, snack time. It's, yours is good. Yours is good. So right now you could actually just keep everything locked. Make sure that everything's locked really tight. Okay. I have to adjust mine slightly. Um, want to make sure we're keeping an eye on the time. Woo. It's already 11.46.
All right, so we're going to move this along um, as fast as we can through the menus because I do want to go into cabling because I know this is a huge thing that is very, um, you open up your gimbal and you're just like, I don't know what to do with all these. So we want to make sure we get to that before we end. All right. So everyone should be, everyone, how's yours? Now, looking? assuming, I mean, it has uh, enough juice for this because I stupidly didn't power up, charge let's, it up. Let's make sure he gets his Well, we got to We got to move as much as we can. So we're going to. I, yeah, it's good. It's pretty close. And and right now when we Do calibrate, it'll let us know. So if you have the RS2, turn on the power button here. Dom, dom, dom. Mine's not going to work. All right. The trick with a DJI product. DJI. You hold it for a beat, and it'll actually count up on the battery. And if you see it in the power. So yours is just not charged, it's which just is fine. It's just dead, dead. But usually they come with some charge. So if you have the RS2, you want to make sure you unlock all of the three different axes. So the tilt, the roll, and the pan, make sure they're all unlocked. Because if they're not, you will fail your calibration. So here on the menu here, there's this little button there. It says start calibration. Now you have yours hanging upside down. Is that? No, not on purpose. It okay. just did that. So right now it shows that the calibration failed initially. And I don't know why it went upside down, but <laughs> so it says calibration is complete. I'm going to try this again. Turn it off. Um, while we do both the menus, can we start doing some cabling, John P? Maybe you should stay on this side of me so you're by my mic, between our mics. Yeah. Um, this comes with a lot, so and funny. I really apologize. I have very dry mouth right now, and I'm assuming my breath is terrible. Uh, there's only so many Not cables. To you, apparently. Yeah, to John. You guys are fine. You're protected. She's fine. Okay, so some of the cables are just duplicates, okay, for different lengths. So, for example, they're all labeled. So you can see this that's one funny. here says USB-C to USB-C, okay? So that's what that is. And there's another one here. It looks like there's a... USB-C to mini USB. So it really just depends on what you need. But most, you're not going to use half of those things. So this thing, does First, it matter which way I put it in? Let's go ahead and lock it. This is the, uh, can you explain to them what the Raven Eye is? Because you're yep. probably explaining it better. Oh, I love the Raven Eye. So the Raven Eye is actually like video tap. It's like video assist. So what it allows to do is transmit the image from the to an iPhone or iPad or whatever. Uh, where you can do various controls from that iPad or just monitor your video. Right, which this, the, these are great because it comes with a yep. cell phone holder so you can have your monitor yeah. in a better position. Now, I, I, last music video I shot, I didn't, use, I didn't use it on here. I actually had somebody off to the side of the screen who was actually watching what I was shooting because I was all over with the gimbal and they were like letting me know. Oh, yeah. Something. I've used so it as a director. Yeah. yeah. So this little piece right here just clicks in underneath this bar. And I can actually... Is that strong? Okay. And it's there's not a lock. It just goes in the middle and clicks over. That's it. And it's got a little detente that'll hold it there. So to get it off, you just pull it back up. Okay. So I'll keep it this way for now so we can actually see. It wants to be upside down. We've got a lot of other little pieces okay. that... Um... All right. So what you need to do is connect the Raven Eye and the camera to these ports here on the on the room. Okay. On the on the Zion, it has similar ports, right? Get this thing backwards. Right here. You see that channel? So that's it only has one port there and that's for a follow focus largely, but it does have something as well. So all you're doing is taking and connecting these up. And most of them are pretty simple. So first of all, if you're using RavenEye, you need to connect the HDMI out of your camera into the RavenEye. So that's one of these cables. 
And since the Raven Eye has a micro, I think they're called micro, HDMI, so that's one of these smaller HDMIs. So you need a, there, standard HDMI to micro HDMI. Love it. Okay, so standard HDMI goes into here. Okay, so you're in there. Micro HDMI goes into the Raven Eye. Only one place to go, okay? Okay. Then you want to connect the Raven Eye to the RS2. So you use a cable like this. And I like the little elbow one because on this side of the Raven Eye, it's a little tight in here. So it just plugs in right here. You going into the top? Yep. There are actually little labels on my them. email, but really, uh, I don't have screen on And then I go into so everything is done through. the bottom yeah. port. Did you um, balance it? Right there. Okay. Great. So that's right so on. You're done. Okay. Things. I'm gonna okay. To then, out, like, is it um, if you want to want? set you up an auto tune, we do. Which I think I have to use these little things yeah. for. Should be the balance so to test. Set up a follow focus so, first okay. before we cable it. What you want to do is you want to hold it. You have to attach at an angle. Okay. With the standard so tools it on? that come, it comes with this unit. Is this unit on? Oh uh, yes. Okay. That actually connects here. To the front of the plate. So that should that change the for some okay. reason. So that's reading these, your the screws in maybe there. I think we could put the small ring, but maybe something in there works. You sure you, that's the right one uh, out of those three? I have a feeling it's one of these other two. See, there's so many yeah, parts, you would, guys. There's so many parts. It, so let's try. I'm going to rewatch this video myself. But I'm also never taking apart anything we put together. There should be. Um, so yeah. Oh, just yeah. There's, a quick, there's probably more bags somewhere. Well, so I don't know. I see, things like this could happen where I don't know why it's upside down. Oh. Which is why it's important to have prep days and <laughs> <laughs> making sure it's balanced, but mine's now upside down, which is interesting. That is so weird. It is. And it's something that I obviously did, but. Well, it works. I'll say, I'll say it works. Did you set it up for filming low? Because that's what it works if you're filming no. low. I actually bought this little handle thing that I wanted. I'm going to have John show me how to use so I can film like that. Oh. But I figured, was it after we tell everybody bye? Because they're probably sick of us. Um, guys, we only have a few minutes left for your questions as we are setting all this up. Or is there anything that's coming up for you? You're putting your gimbals together. Um, if you're watching this after the live and you're having issues with your gimbals, go to the Black Magic Collective Facebook group because these guys will be there to answer questions and our whole community will be there to answer questions. Put them there. That's what the group is there for. And it's private. Only people allowed in are positive, happy filmmakers who want to help each other. There's no negativity at all in that group. Um, also, why they are getting this, finishing this set up. I uh, want to remind you our next event is Thursday, July 15th, 11 a.m. That's next week, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. It's about remote producing. So if you are wanting to film from your house because you want to keep people off of set, you send a few people, a few crew members, and then you're producing from home. What does that mean? What does that take? How are people doing it? That's what our panel's about. Um, remember to submit your five-minute or less short film. So Black Magic Collective Film Festival, it is free. That means you balance it. And uh, like and follow our socials. Like I said, get that Black Magic Collective Facebook group. Join us. Easier? Um, thanks again to Sigma for letting us use their beautiful space. Be? We hope to be uh, here live yeah, again at some point, even if it's next long. year. And uh, yeah. thank you to Black Magic Design for always helping us uh, yeah. have these events and keeping us going. Um, other than that, yeah. you can see he's I mean, got the little. Ultimately, this all comes in the kit that I got. I got the, what's it called? The Pro Combo? However you want to do it. John? It's, it's fine. Hold on. Nah. <laughs> Just because we went over that. This is a pro combo that comes with it. It's really handy. There's two combos. There's like this the standard and the pro combo. The pro comes with the Raven Eye and comes with uh, the follow focus. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool handy. little kit. And it's really not that much more expensive. So again, everything's less than $1,000. And that I know is a lot. But for film equipment, that's cheap. For real. So basically, Shimon, if you can show this little screw. So these came, it came with a bunch of these little screws and that's what attached this bar to the front of the plate and allowed me also to put a screw to hold this rod in place. So now what I should have done, which I didn't do, mm. is put on the follow focus tray. And that's really just this little unit right here. So you want these gears to match up with the focus ring on your lens. If you don't have a lens that has the focus, like these really nice teeth, they come with these little added 
straps that you can put around a regular lens. They're a little fussy. I've never. Yeah, I haven't been able to get it to work. Yeah. So essentially, what I'm going to do is put doing it backwards. So putting this. Oh, it's got another one of those ratchet things. You better loosen. So this is this is where I have trouble with this setup here, and this is why I use a different one. I can't actually get this to meet the lens. Okay. So if you notice on this one over here, if we can slide over. Oh yeah, I'll bring my mic. mic. Okay. <laughs> so with this plate, which is a separate small rig plate, I don't know which camera I'm looking at. Uh, it actually comes also, or you can get this adapter here which all that does is clamp onto the front of this plate and let you adjust it. And then here's my little follow focus rig again. The follow focus came with uh, the Ronin and I slide that on there. Now I can just rotate this into position. Let me get meet up with my threads there. So what is it doing? It's just giving you a little extra it's like just, the padding. Yeah, it's sort of just repositioning it. I don't, I'll need that link. Yeah. You know, you think you've got everything, and there's always one more thing yeah, you gotta buy. So basically, now if you can see, as I'm rotating, the oh, so you gotta make sure it's tight against there. But that's what it would do to connect that. And you can control that through these electronic parts. Yeah. Yes. So ultimately, if I could do it real quickly, I can probably get this thing set up. I'm gonna go into here. Um, so as far as menu stuff for anybody who is uh, still watching and still a little confused, they've calibrated. Are there other things in the menu that they need to set up? Well, there's a lot of other stuff. The main thing is to calibrate it. And then if you have the app, there's a oh, wait, balance I test. You off. Hold on. So the main thing is to calibrate it. Once you've done everything, calibrate it in in the app, it'll tell you if, if it's calibrated successfully, you know that it's balanced. But there are, there's also a balance test feature, and that's also useful. I would do that also just to be really sure because it'll give you a, a score for each access, and all of them should come back excellent. And then if you've met that, then anything extra is just really utilizing the, the different features of the gimbal. Cool. Um, John's going to turn on and show follow focus. Is there anything that... I'm having to rebalance. I had to rebalance too. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Like I, I think I, my plate wasn't set correctly in the right direction, so it ended up balancing upside um, down. I know I'm going to have to add the extra piece, but while we're talking cables, so this here was going to see. I've already forgotten where everything goes. Going to revisit. Um, Carly, any questions coming in? Everybody seems to be good. Want to check in? With Marlon, give get him up, tell him thank you. I, I have a question. Yes. So I'm hold, on, hold on. Mike coming your way. Hold on to Marlon. Okay. So I'm actually thinking about purchasing a Sigma FP as a second camera that I would like to use with the gimbal, but that's a considerably like lighter, smaller camera. Is there some concerns? Is the gimbal is there such a thing as like too small of a camera to no. put on a gimbal? Okay. No. So absolutely not. Okay. I would almost think as the smaller the camera, the easier the gimbal is to work. Or it, no? it should. I mean, because it's not it's not dealing with the massive amount of weight that it's trying to balance. Right. So I wouldn't be concerned. I think it's great. It'll work easy. It'll be easier to balance too. Okay, great. Uh Marlon, how are you doing? You have any questions? Did you ever get that balance? If not, afterwards we'll have these guys come to your screen and help you make it happen. I, I think that would help me a lot afterwards that someone coaches me through it. I get it for a second, but then the slightest thing happens and the balance is off. See, that's why um, I wanted to do, and I, stupid COVID, I want to have a full, like anybody who has a gimbal, come in and let's get our gimbal set up with instructor, instructors like John and um, every, just, you know, we got to have social distancing and minimal people. So we will try to just hang on tight after we get off and I'll have John come over to you. Um, thank you for joining us. Unfortunately, I know you couldn't be here, but glad you're with us. Um, everybody well, else, we are going to um, keep rolling and keep live so that we can do show more stuff, but we get that your time is valuable. So feel free to come back. This video will be online immediately. So 
check the time code now and just come back and finish later if you want. Um, you can keep the questions coming in if you want. Um, are you, you're doing something on your cell phone to work for the remote right now? Right now I'm connecting my cell phone to Raven Eyes so that we can see that. Do you need a special app? Yes, the, the well, no. You need the Ronin app, so yes, you need Ronin app, DJI Ronin app. Does, does the, the, the Zion also have its own app for their stuff? I'm assuming everybody has their. And if you can see right here. Yeah, all of them have their own app. You can see that phone. I'm actually showing the image real time on the Raven Eye. So the blurry image. Yeah, I'm trying to get the call up. So right now I'm doing that balance test I was telling you about. So it has me inclining it. And what's great about this is it, it it's really accurate. It'll tell you if it's balanced or not. Is that through the Ronin app? That's through the Ronin app. But all of, most gimbals, I would be surprised if there's not a gimbal with an app. All of them should have apps and I'm, I'm positive they do. So excellent, excellent, excellent. So that means. Oh, he's excellent. Whatever. Well, that means it's it's fully balanced, so I'm able to use it. And it's not upside down really, anymore. Yeah. So I got my follow up. Okay. So. So, and that's Raven Eye. I don't know if you can see this, Shimon, but. So that's so. I know we're short of time, but so all I did is connect. If you can show this on the camera here. Connecting the ball focus through the cable to one of these ports in here. This is the on? middle one yeah. turned out to be the right one. I had it in the wrong one. And basically I can program so nice and down. It's up down here to this wheel. You can control the focus now, the focus motor. And that's what I'm doing. And you can see it on the Raven Eye on the camera. So the other thing honestly gets easier and easier every time but sometimes it you know uh, Oh God, is there anything else? Point it at Pat. No, no, don't point it at me. So he's out of focus right now, but watch with the Raven Eye. I can actually track Patrick, and I'm having to turn around. Yep. If you see now, I'm actually in there, and I looked at the. So basically, the guys who can't hear them, what he's showing is that when you're connected to the Raven Eye, he tried to trick it. He used the app to catch. To capture Patrick's face, he touched the app yeah, on so Patrick's face, and now the camera is following anywhere Patrick goes without Randy really having to move. So that's one of the features of Raven Eye is to be able to do a, a object tracking. It's also something they have in their drones, which works great. But Raven Eye mm -hmm. allows you to do that here. So it's kind of cool when you do a shoot, you can operate the gimbal but let it track the face of the person. That's pretty pretty great when you're doing these one man person. If I'm not mistaken, I, I also believe uh, DJI just updated their their gimbal. So now you could access and control the pocket 4K and 6K through the app. What? Uh, so and all those features. Yeah, I, I think I, I, there may be a new update, but so far I've been able to control the recording oh, functions yeah. and a few other things through Raven Eye. That's awesome. But um, I think there's a few things that still didn't. Well, I think that new something. update just might oh, have tackled that. But you see, you're a professional. You've done this before. There's no easy way. You just have to learn how to deal with your gear. And sometimes you'll you'll uh, run into little hiccups. But I feel like the more you play with it, the more you realize it's not anything to be intimidated about. It's not really that complicated. It just takes a little bit of practice. So I recommend put on music, watch a tutorial, try to keep balancing it, make it an enjoyable uh, an enjoyable thing and before you know it, you, it it's it, it'll become second nature um okay so final cabling just for everybody who is like me and is, just doesn't get it so i've take I've, you do the follow focus into the middle one mm -hmm. we did the raven eye into the bottom Correct. what is going into the top that is the one that can be camera controlled so if you connect in, in this particular case take a <laughs> so many cables and watch us not have the you one just, we need. Well, you just need USB-C to USB-C. So here it is. You always have the cables. So that would go into the top here. And then it would, I feed it under the lens so it doesn't get in the way. Okay. Under the lens and back up here 
And if you turn on the pocket cameras, there's a USB-C port right there. So when you plug that in there, you have to set it up. But once you set it up, it will control um, various settings, either through RavenEye or even through the dial here. Wow. You know, um, so you could, like, in theory, move your ISO by using something down here. About. Yeah, or, or by a touch screen here. Nice. Because this screen here is a great little touch screen. When you charge um, it. When you charge it. Hold on. Let me show on this one. So if you... Oops. So if you look at this touch screen, it's, it's basically does, I to get it to go in. Mm. I think it's because I have the Raven eye adjusted. Mm. It won't let you do anything. But in theory. He's touching things on his screen and the camera's like following whatever he's touching. This is kind of a good way to self-tape probably, right? You just put it there and you get it to follow your face and you could do your own little talk show where you do like this. I'm doing the magic, shut it off and turn it back on. <laughs> that always works. Um, actually, can we go through? Oh, here, hold on. Here. <laughs> I need your mic. Mm -hmm. So I think Patrick showed you some of these screens, but if you have Raven Eye connected, you can just swipe on the screen and now... If I point to Patrick, I can actually draw on his face. I think I missed you. Hold on. Mm -hmm. It's a tiny screen, but I can draw on his face. And now Raven and I will track him there. So you don't need a phone to use a lot of these operations, but you can do them directly on uh, the little screen that's included with the RS2. That's such a great feature, too, especially when you're one man band. We're going to creep, creep you out and just let it, let it keep tracking. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So any other cables that we would need? So like, for instance, there's another hole on the Raven Eye. Charging. That's charging. That's charging the Raven Eye itself. Okay. And so it doesn't get, does it get charged up through your, in, through this when it's on? I believe that if you connect it the right way, you can charge it or run it through the battery here. But it has its own internal battery, so you don't really need to. Um, just as a note, we should put these antennas out like that. And this is how you turn on the Raven Eye. There's a button here. And again, you hold it and watch the, the count up there, and the red light will turn on. And now your Raven Eye is actually on. So there's these two antennas that you should put those out before you balance. So that's, again, another element of balancing. Um, are there any other cables that I am missing that I would need to make this work? I feel like there was a lot more cables when this was on set last month. Well, there's other things you could add. They have the, the 3D focus system, which is interesting, that would go on top here if you want to add some type of automatic focus. That's an additional thing you would plug in, but it looks like you have everything plugged in for the most part. Okay, so final focus. step, and then we'll let everybody go, and then I'm going to ask you guys more questions off because I don't want to keep this going forever. But um, so I want to pack this up, right? So I want to take this apart and put it away. Um, or do I just never? Like, so my thought is, if I want to, go, if I want to put everything in one case, camera, gamble, everything, but I don't want to redo all the redo balancing. Is there a way to kind of? You could take it like that. Put a seatbelt on it in your car. I've done that before. <laughs> I'm saying there's no there's no right or wrong way. If you want to if you want to package it up nicely because you're you want everything to be nice, then break it down and package it up. That's why I'm saying practice until you feel confident that you know you could set it up and balance it anywhere. But you could also do it before the shoot and bring it to set like that and do right. little micro adjustments. Right. You had final M words. M Jones asks if there is an extension to that monitor. I don't, I'm, I'm going to assume he means the Raven Eye thing. Raven Eye will only work to one iPhone or one iOS device. I think it might have an Android app too. So one of those devices that are like a phone or an iPad. If you want video assist, you're going to have to put another wireless device like a wireless video assist as part of the unit, and that'll wirelessly transmit the signal to regular video tap. But that is not part of the Raven Eye thing. Raven Eye only goes to one unit. And that's all I have to say.
Guys, it's been really fun. We've kept you a very long time. Thanks for sticking around this whole way. Again, all those final questions, go to the Black Magic Collective Facebook group. Uh, join us there, and I'll make sure that Patrick and John answer anything there. Right, guys? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Thank you to, to Randy and Rise for joining us as students and uh, putting themselves out here. Uh, Shimon, thanks for operating the camera. Harley, thanks for producing. Mark, thanks for running everything else in the building. Harley, you said you have one more thing for us? No, all good? Okay, then we are going to say goodbye until next time, next week. See you here.